So I married a film critic. So Welcome to So I Married a Film Critic. I'm your co-host Julia. This is Bear the Film Critic. Hello, everyone. And we are continuing our. Uh, what are you going to call it? Stallone Palooza. Stallone Palooza. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> With um, the movie from 1981, Nighthawks. Nighthawks. Yeah, this was the first time he played a cop. Oh. He's played a lot of cops. Wow. I think my favorite is Freddie Heflin, the cop in Copland, which he did in 97. Of course, there's also Tango and Cash. He was a cop in that. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what else? Stop or my mom will shoot. He's a cop in that. He's played a lot of cops, and he's a cop in this one with uh, really unruly hair and uh, uniform. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not a fan of uh, the look here. It's weird because I'll watch him in, like, for example, like Rocky IV, and I'll just be like, God, he's he's gorgeous. He's such yeah. a good-looking guy. Not here. This, yeah. <laughs> is it, what is it? Is it the hair? Is it the is it the outfit? Is yeah. it a combo? I think it's the, basically, you know, we're just coming out of the 70s. He's got the 70s hair. He's got these glasses that he sort of wears sometimes. And yeah, the outfits are did, not doing it. Yeah, did he see Serpico and think I got to do that? Because it's it's just yeah, I, I don't know. Like because he has a beard in Rocky Four. You know when he's training. You know when he's doing that montage where he's like basically fighting a mountain to prepare to fight Dolph Lundgren. He's got a beard and he looks cool. But you know in this, like I, the hair is huge. You know the what I think it is. What is it? It's almost like the hair is bigger than the muscles, and mm. that should it should always be the other way around. And he keeps his shirt on for this film, right? Yes. Another acting stretch. I know. Yeah. It's like, but I think this was maybe before he got like super buff. Oh, yeah, definitely. So. Yeah, this is, I mean, Rambo was the next. Ju- like, First Blood was the movie he did after this. So, like, trying to maybe be a more serious actor? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was he was doing some interesting stuff, no question. I mean, he did a, a John Huston movie called Victory. I mean, he was doing some really kind of, uh, kind of, you know, left field stuff. I mean, after Rocky, he had so many options, and this was, this was one of them. Because this is my big complaint about this film, is it is slow starting. <laughs> oh, my gosh, is yeah. it slow. And there's a lot of talky talk, talk talk. Yeah, we'll we'll get to that. But man alive, yeah, it's th- there's there's buddy cop action movies before and after Lethal Weapon. This is the before phase where it's like you know there's a there's witty rapport between the two cops and there's spectacular action. This is a police procedural. Yes, this is two guys who barely have chemistry. They're just on the job. And they're like, okay, let's 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 uh, let's solve this case. Let's do some okay. paperwork and let's ask questions and let's go to the evidence locker. Yeah, it's <laughs> like the biggest thing. <laughs> like Billy D. Williams is just like, you have to do this. You have to do this. Like, <laughs> okay, you know, like nothing really compelling in his performance. Oh yeah, well, you know, I gotta say, like to give. I want to give Billy D. Williams a little credit in the world. Yes, yes, we all know him as Lando Calrissian, but he was in two Diana Ross films, one called Mahogany, the other called Lady Sings the Blues. Um, Billy D. Williams, I mean, in addition to being so insanely handsome himself and so charismatic, um, he was also the spokesperson for Colt 45 at this point. I don't know what that is. Okay, we're going to drink some right after this. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I, I agree with you. Billy D. Williams... It doesn't have a, I mean, he's basically the, you know, the other cop, basically. It's just like you said. So Stallone has someone to talk to. Otherwise. He'd well, just be talking to himself. Yeah, I'd be like his I'm inner gonna find that guy. Which, by the way, is like most of the movies he did after this. <laughs> I'm going to find that guy. I'm going to break him. I'm going to break him. <laughs> All right. Well, let's jump into this because I just had a really hard time with the first about 30, 40 minutes of this film. <laughs> 30, 40, 55 minutes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. Okay, because we open up on December 31st in a real dingy New York City. Whoa, man. Super dingy. Oh, your tea has some bugs in it. Yeah, a three. Three floaters. Yeah, you shouldn't drink that. Well, this is an ominous beginning for this podcast. Let's continue. Yeah, here. You can have this one. Well, thank you, dear. No I've... bugs in yours. <laughs> I'm drinking just, Colt 45. Just like thinking of you, Mr. D. Williams. Staring in his teacup all sad. 
Man, I was excited about doing this podcast too. And I'm like, oh, I got bugs in my teeth. Okay, anyway. so dingy New York City. Come on. Oh man, the New York I remember from my childhood. Yes, yeah, I scary mean, trash everywhere. Oh man, everyone's a pimp or a prostitute. It's well, great. There's garbage like... everywhere. There was a garbage strike. Yeah, there was a garbage strike. I don't, I don't know if it was made during this movie or if it's just the art direction or if they're like, oh, perfect. Let's just let's just action. Um, but yeah, it, this is this is definitely. I do remember New York looking like this. I remember like my dad taking me to see Cats. You know, when I was playing at the Winter Garden Theater, like the first couple of years, as opposed to like the and, decades it was there. And my my dad taking me there and like, oh man, it, my dad was like, do not stop. Do yeah. not talk to anyone. Do not ask questions. Go, son, move. And that's why you're such a fast walker. I have a very fast pace to this day because I, I seriously, because I remember walking with my dad. Like, okay, dad. And just like moving really quickly. I'm like, was that blood? <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the difference between like an East Coast upbringing where you had to like, you know, always be on guard and like my like Northern California, like Valley girl upbringing where I'm just like, why are you going so fast? Like, can you slow down? Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. had a very, very fast uh, walk. Yeah, it changed when 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 my family moved and we changed locations drastically. No, but yeah, you mo- still have a fast walk. I yeah. still have to like run to keep up with you. Well, I'm worried about you know stepping on the pimps and the hose and the and the <laughs> and the the needles and the the crack and you know all the stuff that's in the garbage. You know, like, I still see it. St- I still see it. I can still smell it. <laughs> New York of the '80s, yeah, the Ed Co- Ed Koch years. Okay, so Stallone. You, okay, well, we see a woman walking down the street, and the, and then there's these like guys that are like, you know, one on either end of the of the block and then what happens she pulls off her face, face and it's Stallone undercover it's pretty weird because you look at her and you like okay there's something kind of weird about her face maybe she's just wearing too much makeup yeah like she's kind of shiny yeah very very shiny yeah and she pulls our face off and it's it's yeah it's bearded Stallone yeah it's a pretty crazy intro to this character. Yeah, so there's an attempted mugging, but he beats up the guys. He drags one off while reading his Miranda rights. Yeah. And it, so, you know, I was pretty optimistic at the beginning. Because I'm like, <laughs> all right. This isn't so bad. Yes. <laughs> this is like really moving. And then it says like, same day in London. Okay, so we meet Wolfgar. Played by the wonderful, the late, great Rucker Hauer. Yeah, and he goes into... A store. He's a very creepy dude. He's with Kath- Catherine Mary Stewart. That's the the lady who he speaks to. Catherine Mary Stewart, of course, the star of everything from the last Starfighter to the Apple. Which, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's great, great actress. Yeah. So he's talking to her while he's like <clears throat> using his foot to stuff this bag under, you know, this table, and then he walks out of the store and everything Boom. just blows up. Yeah. yeah. So he works for a terrorist organization, obviously. All right, then we go to January fourth in New York. <laughs> this drove you and crazy. I was like, "Are we gonna like? <laughs> is this movie gonna tell me like every single day? Like, like I need to know that? Oh my gosh, it's like five days later or four days later." Yes, it's that's exactly what this movie is. It's constantly giving you a calendar. Yeah. So Stallone and his partner bust some bad guys. And that that his partner is Billy D. Williams. Yeah. So yeah, you're watching Sylvester Stallone and Billy D. Williams kick butt, um, but they don't seem to have a lot of chemistry. Right. That's no. yeah. They kind of don't. I kind of get the feeling that Billy D. Williams doesn't really like him. I get the feeling Billy D. is like, why am I not the star of this movie? <laughs> and by the way, Billy D. Williams, good question. Yeah, good exactly. question. Like I'm a better actor than Stallone. <laughs> At this point, that might have been true. Yeah. Um, and then. Stallone goes to a department store to see a woman who we find out is his ex-wife. And he wants to see her tonight, but she's not sure. And um, she's like, well, what do you want from me? And he counters, well, what do you want from me? All right. I cannot handle <laughs> Stallone and his relationships in any of these movies that he writes. Did he write this? No, he did not. Okay. It's but... like he wrote it. <laughs> Okay. I'm sure he had a hand you in the know, script. I'm sure he was just like, you know what would be great? <laughs> if he's terrible at relationships. Because this always happens. He like, he doesn't ever have like good answers for why he leaves relationships though. Like he never, it's never explained in any film. It's like, 
oh, you know, things are just not working out. And when you don't feel it, you don't feel it. Yeah, it's like stuff like that. It's always like these BS answers that no woman in real life would ever put up with. What do you want from me, Deke? What do you want from me? What? Look, maybe I made a few mistakes. I admit that, all right? Look, I, I, you wouldn't like living with me again. You really wouldn't, I'm telling you. I mean, I know what I like. Well, it isn't the right time now, anyway. It's just not the right time. The people grow, Deke, and I don't understand why you can't get transferred off the streets. I don't understand why you have to do these insane kind of things. Why the hell can't you change? I did. Can I come by tonight? Why didn't you ever pay this much attention when I was with you? Because I didn't know what it'd be like without you. I'm gonna, I have to get back to work. I have to go. I've really got a million things to do. Uh, we'll talk later, all right? For some reason, he charms her enough to like, oh, okay, we can like go to dinner. Like, what? It's like they were married and now they're not. And now he's trying to like get her back. But why? What What happened? You know, it's New York in the early 80s. He's probably one of the best picks out there. <laughs> okay, but I did in the extras. I didn't watch all the extras. But this actress... She said that a bunch of stuff got cut out of the. Yeah, movie. even Stallone has said that too. Apparently, yeah. the studio had its way with it. I've heard people say that Stallone had his way in well, the editing that room too. There was more about their relationship yeah. in this. But yeah, I, by the way, this is Lindsay Wagner, who's a very. I mean, this is the this is this uh, what do you call it? The Bionic Woman. Oh yeah. All right, but I'm just saying it is so common in his movies where it's just like. There's a relationship that went bad, like for, well, for no reason, because you never know what the reason is. All right, we'll, we'll go through the Stallone movie Rolodex. How many of the Stallone movies you've seen would you call a love outside of Rocky? How many love stories has he made? Okay, how many like romantic comedies? They're, he doesn't make them. I know, but there's always a relationship in there, and at the very least, the very least, we could get like a decent, honest reason or answer for why his character is a loser in relationships and we never get it. That's my problem. I don't care that he's a loser in relationships, but just give us a freaking good reason. You have none because you're a lazy writer. All right. Well, there's Copland. Um, there's a scene in Copland that always moves me to tears where he is on a couch with Annabella Sciorra and she married the wrong person. And she's clearly always loved Freddie played by Stallone. And uh, they're playing Bruce Springsteen on the record. And she asks him, why didn't you ever get married? And he looks at her with tears in his eyes, and it's like, because all the good girls were taken. I love that scene. So he he has he has done one film. <laughs> oh, I am he's rolling done, my eyes done. so hard right now <laughs> that you are trying to defend this. Well, I, I think it's compelling. I do. I honestly I, I I would rather see a film about for one thing, I can't I don't I, look, I don't relate to this, but like I certainly know a lot of guys like this who are uncommitted. Or there can be, you know, dirt bags in the okay. relationships. Okay, but like, do a li- like a couple lines of introspection, or give us something, like anything that makes sense. We all we all know people. We and you and I personally know people who've been in relationships. Was like, why are they together? Why are they still together? Why does she put up with him? Yeah, and eventually you find out all the good reasons, <laughs> and Stallone doesn't give me any, so that's why I'm annoyed. You know what this film would have been wise to do? Is cut this part of the film out. Don't you think? I don't know. All the scenes of him going to the... the hey, how yeah, you do? Maybe she gets some, some tacos or yeah, something. Yeah, I mean... Do it, you still love me? I don't know. Hey, I gotta go. You want to get would, some tacos? But, I mean, the movie, it would mess up the ending. So they would have had to have changed the ending. Well, that's the problem, is the character. It, it is one she, of these typical she is damsel, a pivotal, damsel in distress. Exactly, yeah. She's a pivotal piece to the to the plot, which is unfortunate. Because it's, uh, yeah, then, yes, they could have totally cut her out. Yeah, because she's a plot device. Yeah. She's needed because there has to be a hostage sort of situation in the third act. Right, yeah. Exactly. yeah. So that's the problem. I mean... Uh, which, There's all sorts of cliches in this movie. Yeah, which I'm fine with the ending, and we'll get there. But 
I don't like. Oh, these. you should be more than fine with the ending because if any, if, it, if there's anything about this movie that works like gangbusters, oh, it's the ending. Yeah, the ending of this makes film. You know what? It's the only thing this about this movie, movie I've it. I've always remembered this film for years, and it's because of the crazy ending. Yeah, it makes it makes this first like slog of half an hour. But anyway, like, let's get back it. to the calendar of the beginning. Okay, so then we go to oh now we're at January sixth in London. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, the sarcasm. Yeah, Wolfgar has killed some operatives. They say they said that bombing the store was overdone, and he says it's what has to happen in these kind of operations. So we're just seeing kind of how this guy works. Um, now it's January 9th in Paris. <laughs> it's like, this movie, my gosh. <laughs> a woman gets off at the train and into a car, and she meets Wolfgar at a confession booth. And this is, um, we find out later who it is, but he's basically too recognizable in Europe to keep working. So, it's, oh, he meets the character Shaka, who she comes back later. But um, he's too recognizable. You know, you can't, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to work here anymore. And then um, it's like, oh, okay, obviously he's going to go to New York. Yeah obviously yeah and he gets a he gets a full-on facelift although i mean i mean you know for the the beginning of the film if you know what rucker Hauer looks like it is just like okay why is he in this weird disguise you're just waiting for him to look like himself oh yeah i i had no idea like what he looked like so for for me to watch him with like prosthetics to no prosthetics i was mm. like oh, okay that, i mean i felt like that worked mm. yep. yeah okay so now we're back in new york <laughs> <laughs> and all the time julia is just so furious like is there gonna be a quiz afterwards i don't care what day it is it's so stupid oh is it labor day now who cares is stallone still in this movie i'm like oh man maybe i should have picked tango and cash <laughs> Okay, so um, <laughs> Stallone and his partner are like doing this undercover operation in again like gritty, ugly New York City, yep. and then these cops um, show up and totally blow their cover, and you're like, "What are you doing? You blew my cover!" And they're like, "Boss wants you back at the station. Like, don't you know? Don't blame the messenger. Like, get over there." So. He finds out, oh, okay, then we're back in Europe. And Wolfgar, <laughs> Wolfgar gets plastic surgery. And he tells the surgeon, like, I want to be beautiful. Like, okay. Which is, I think people, don't do you say that to all of your surgeons? Do people think Rucker Hauer is, like, beautiful? But he, well, he, he does threaten, well, well, he threatens his surgeon before he does what, like, don't do that. That's a bad move. Yeah. Second of all, um, when Anne Rice wrote the character of Lestat in Interview with the Vampire, she had him in mind. That's the character that Tom Cruise played in the movie, Interview with the Vampire, oh. Lestat the Vampire. Um, yeah, she apparently envisioned Rucker Hauer for the role. So, yeah, I think sex symbol, maybe. Um, I, uh, no, I don't <laughs> think so. He's a good-looking dude, and he was a fantastic actor, very versatile. Um, he, I mean, he, he did get stuck playing villains for a while. Um, he has a kind of a a villainy face. He really does. Well, he's got beautiful blue eyes. It's like one of these things where either he gets to play the heartthrob or he plays the villain. I don't think he could play a heartthrob. He played a heartthrob. He did the movie Lady Hawk. He was definitely a heartthrob, but he also played the villain in Blade Runner. He was in Nighthawks and, and Lady Hawk. Yes. Wow. Get you cornered the market of the Hawks. <laughs> Though he's not in uh, over the top about Lincoln Hawk. Oh. Um, but yeah, he um but he's most famous for Blade Runner and then a movie called The Hitcher where he's so scary in that movie. Yeah, see, now that I've seen him play a bad guy, I don't think I could see him play like a love interest leading man. He but he did. He did. Wow. Yeah, but I I understand. He's He's the one of the biggest things I like about this movie. I love his performance. He's he's terrifying in this. He's yeah. so disturbing. Oh no, he is scary. He's so I mean, the character is scary, and I think the performance matches the mystique of the character. So he threatens his his surgeon before the surgery, and you were like, "That's a bad idea." Yeah, don't do that. But then he ends up killing his plastic surgeon anyways. Yeah, well, it kills this, everybody. This plastic surgeon should have just like botched his nose job or something just to get even, because like. With, he wakes well, up out of surgery like, do? why do I have three nostrils? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, like, why not? This guy is a total jerk. Like, why would the plastic surgeon do a good job just yeah. to be killed? All right. Yeah. Now we're back in New York oh, again. Uh, it's just like, it just keeps going back and forth, back and forth. It does. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's like 30 second scene and then you're like, whoa, where am I? What's happening? All right. So now we find out that Stallone is being reassigned to a special team. He's learning anti-terrorism techniques because Wolfgar is in New York and they said like he murdered his plastic surgeon. And this is like, these are these scenes where he's in like a, what? underground like classroom with this anti-terrorist guy and we're stuck in this classroom with him it's just it's it's like a ted talk that just does not end the movie keeps cutting back to these scenes of stallone and billy d williams watching this uh this terrorism this this is what this this training yeah this training video well, no, it's like not it's even a slideshow. Yeah, it's a slideshow. Yeah, they didn't even have video cassettes at this but point. But the guy is like giving them all this information, and after a while, like Stallone kind of loses it, which I can understand. And he's like, "You have to be ruthless," you know, like you have to like think like these guys. A better movie would have cleaned this all up with one scene, but yeah. it, but, but I mean, it, it goes like this. What? There's, there's at least four of these yeah. scenes. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. So, um, by the way, Stallone's character's name is Deke De Silva. Deke De Silva. Deke De Silva. Yeah, Deke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we see. So it's it, so the terrorism guy, anti-terrorism guy, is talking about Wolfgar's like how he kind of infiltrates things and does what he does, and then we get to see it happen mm-hmm. like in real time. Yeah. <laughs> so. Wolfgar is at a disco club. He makes like he makes his a mark out of this woman, and he's like, okay, she's the one. So um, she shows him. They're you know then they're out like the next day. Of course, I don't know that because the movie didn't tell me it was the next day, but mm. you know I'm guessing. Yes. Um. So she shows him where all the news stations in New York are. She is a stewardess, and he just decides to make himself at home at her place. So he just like moves in with this flight attendant. Um, he blows up some buildings in the financial district, like late at night when no one's there to kind of like make his mark. Um, okay. Yeah. Here I have Stallone and his partner have been sitting in class for days. (laughs) He's being trained to be a killer and he doesn't like that. Right. Yeah. So the trainer gets personal and calls him out that like, this is why your wife left you. I was like, dang, dude. Man. Yeah. And, um, he's like, that's it. I'm done. And the guy was like, I make my business to know the backgrounds of everyone and like what's valuable to you and make you live in fear. And I would have loved it if Stallone's character just got like all touchy feel like she didn't leave me. Okay. I just took her to Italian food the other night. Okay. <laughs> We're working it out. It's none of your business. Okay. <laughs> just so you guys know. Okay. See, I got the ring right here. Okay. We're working right. it out. It's none of your business. <laughs> I just, I put on Facebook, it's complicated, so leave me alone. See, hey, my partner, you can vouch, okay? Like, she she dude, she follows me in the ride-alongs, and we're good. It's okay, all right? I don't know, I can make, make a big deal about it. Oh, my gosh. Bears me in front of my buddies. So he just, like, <laughs> I love it how he just goes, like, I'm out, and then, like, walks out, <laughs> walks away. Um, and then Billy D. Williams, this is where he's just like, you can't be out. Like, you've got to do this, man, you yeah. know? And, like... It's not a very good speech. I I didn't feel like this was very, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, Like a little yeah. more, like, encouraging or, like, inspirational. Yeah, just listen to me. I didn't join to kill people. I don't want to be part of it anymore. No, right? I, I know that. I understand that. But listen, listen. You don't have to say anything about my wife. Wait, wait, listen, 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 listen. Just listen to me. Look, he's asking us to commit ourselves to stopping a, 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 a terrorist who's capable of wiping out hundreds of people in one shot, just like that. All right. Now, you're one of the best. He's looking at you as one of the best, and you can't back off now. You gotta stay with it. Think about it, okay? It's up to you. But he's basically like, you're a punk if you don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> and Stone's like, okay, fine. Yeah, fine. All right. Uh, I'll, I'm back in. So, um,. Wolfgar's uh, stewardess girlfriend finds his suitcase of weapons and so many grenades stashed in her closet. It's pretty funny. And there's I mean, no lock on the suitcase. This is supposed to be like a sad scene, but it's pretty comical. 
my gosh, I'm trying to get my dress and there's a big suitcase here. What's inside? Oh my gosh, it's grenades. <laughs> oh, hi, hon. Are these yours? Like, oh man, this character is going to be alive for only three, two, and she's out of the Well, movie. this is what Wolfgar says to her because he, she's like, I, I won't say anything. Like, I, I promise, you know, he's like, you go to better life. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least he knows, like, he's the bad one and she's probably going to go to heaven because he's murdering her, mm. you know? But it's just like, yeah, he kills her off screen. So anyways, then, uh, so Deke De Silva Stallone, <laughs> comes back to his boss and he's like, you know, all right, I'm back in. And then he gets his file read to him and we find out he served in Vietnam and had 52 registered kills. I mean... Is that a lot, or I don't even know what that means. Uh, well, I mean, I guess keep. I guess that's a, a kill count. I don't even know if that was a thing. Yeah, I don't. But know. by the way, that's a that's a slow day for John Rambo. By the way, which is the character he played right after this. Yeah, that is a slow day for Rambo. So De Silva should just be a, kind of ashamed of that, or what? Well, he's making the point, like, why do you have morals about stopping? Uh, oh. You know, why are you having moral moral issues about? But when you because killed all because they people. wanted they, they he, because the guy wants these New York cops to be a, an assassin for him. That's what he wants. Yeah, and they're all being like, "Hey, like we you know we're we're the pay is not to we're not being paid to kill people. We're being paid to stop people and put them in." So these yeah. are all honest cops, good cops. Yeah, he found like the only honest cops in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Whose big thing? Okay, what I'm going to do is we're going to do the sting operation, and I'm going to dress up like a woman. <laughs> And Billy D's like, you know, we could just arrest them. Either. No, no, no. Got to dress up like a woman. Okay, got to be in a dress. Got to have a purse. Got to have pumps on. It's going to be great. Got to have a big blonde wig. Like, we could just, you know, we could just say you have the right to remain silent. And, you know, no, no, no. It's like, got to be just like a woman. Got to do it. Okay. Yeah. I just got these shoes that match. It's going to be great. Do it. I know. I was like, oh, an alternative title would be like Drag Queen Cops. I feel like they probably made that movie sometime in the 80s and it probably played in the kind of scuzzy theater we see in this movie mm. yeah mm. okay i mean seems like it would be kind of a fun idea if like that's how they like made all their arrests <laughs> i'm sure there's some bad 80s comedy that that probably had that as a premise it's like yeah. it's tootsie meets lethal weapon oh yeah you're right yeah. they probably did in fact, now that I think about it, I'm sure there's at least two Police Academy movies that have that subplot in there yeah, somewhere. That's, that's true. Yeah. I just haven't seen them yet. Okay. Police Academy 3. Oh, see, so yeah. you thought of one. It's on the poster where Bubba Smith has a blonde wig on. Yeah, there you oh, go. Oh, there you go. Yeah. It's already been done. Already been done. Every idea has already been done. All mm-hmm. right. So we find out that they found the stewardess is dead. So obviously, because. Stewardess or flight attendant? Well, they say stewardess in the movie. Oh, so dated. Well, I'm so offended right now. Well, <laughs> okay, they are flight attendants. <laughs> I'm just saying what they They're said. not waitress of the skies, okay? They're flight attendants. <laughs> waitress of the skies. Excuse me, sky waitress? <laughs> it would be sky server? How sky dare server. you? <laughs> <laughs> you're getting no tur- No, you're getting no tip, sky waitress. <laughs> oh man. They are not here just to give you drinks. They're here for your safety. Okay, this is Jet Blue. Okay, I expect excellence. Okay. <laughs> Jet Blue. <laughs> I've never even been on Jet Blue. Yeah, there's a reason. Anyway, okay, so our new sponsor, Jet Blue. <laughs> they find a map in her apartment of where the bombing was. So I'm like, man, this guy is just sloppy. You know, he's just like leaving stuff in her apartment. Or maybe his girlfriend was just like, oh my god, what is this? I'm just going to leave this out. I don't even know what this is. What's that suitcase over there? Maybe she just had a day where she just, you know. I just want to know who he is, you guys. I just want to see. No, she's dead. I mean, before. Before. Oh. oh yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So now. She's Stil- just a, a nosy girlfriend, and that's that's what happens. So De Silva and his partner are now on the beat to find people who knew her. And, like, they go all these places. No, no, no. We have no idea. You would say it's a montage, but really it's just, it's a couple of short scenes that are just cut to, like, the essence of, do you know anything? No. Okay, next. Yeah. Call me if you do. Here's my card. I mean, over and over again. Um, Then one guy at a club says that he's seen her and she was with a blonde guy. So after, so they're in the same club. 
that Wolfgar originally found her and he's like, oh, we're just going to hang out for a little bit. It's like, yeah, like, don't, don't cause any trouble. Like, are you kidding me? They're just like, what? So Stallone is like, like, you know, like scanning the crowd. He's super intense in this scene. Didn't you think? Oh, yeah. And then he like takes his glasses off. Which I don't get. Is he nearsighted or farsighted? He must be farsighted and so he needs them for things up close but doesn't need them for things far away i think what happened was Stallone's like okay like i gave really good close-up but these stupid glasses are getting <laughs> in the way and like they're reflective because like you go for a close-up you're gonna be looking at the glasses it's gonna be glare so i'm gonna take off my glasses through this suit okay it doesn't make any sense but it's gonna look good <laughs> so um oh yeah so after a long time he spots wolfgar he's literally like staring him down and then he... Um, it's intense. You know, these actors are giving good close-up. So then Wolfgar is kind of like, oh, I'm going to like leave with this chick. And he starts to walk out and, and Stallone just like yells like, Wolfgar! <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens. Because maybe he reacts. And he turns around <clears throat> and shoots somebody in the... Like, just shoots one of the like patrons. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. If you were a cop in this situation, would you like endanger all those people like really apparently okay so now there's a chase and they're running through new york they run through a warehouse that makes sparks because it's the 80s and every 80s movie has a scene where there's either the final shootout or a chase through a factory that makes sparks or smoke (laughs) yeah this one makes a lot of colorful sparks yes um, sometimes there's no, not even anyone manning the no, sparks. No, no. There's just alone. It's like, we'll just leave the spark machine on. <laughs> it's okay. It makes sparks. It makes smoke. That's what we do. Uh, so then, um, Wolfgar runs into the subway and takes a woman hostage. So there's no clear shot. I thought this scene was really scary. Yeah, it's very intense. It's good. Because then he takes her and like gets on the subway with her and... Billy D. Williams is like, you should have taken the shot. Yeah. But I mean, he, he clearly could have killed that woman. I think that lady was screaming for her life because she was so terrified to be forced to go on the New York subway. <laughs> <laughs> well, then why is she in the subway station? <laughs> He's like, I just did this. <laughs> I'm going to risk my life a second time. So they break into the subway, yeah. like on in the back. It's cool. Yeah. And so you're just watching like Wolfgar, like, go through all the train cars they're like going through all the train cars then the chase continues off the subway and this is where wolfgar slices billy d williams face oh man yeah yeah i mean man a couple inches lower and it would have been his neck and he would have been a goner right yeah so um he survives and they're in the hospital and he's like you should have took the shot yeah oh man the guilt the The, guilt yeah the guilt like do you think that it's like yeah if you're if you your partner gets hurt obviously you're gonna like second guess things but to have your partner say that see he hates him he's angry he hates deke (laughs) like deke de silva you think you're such a great amazing super cop yeah but look at my face now it's all sliced why don't i ever get to dress up as a woman why just once (laughs) I look good in pumps. <laughs> By mean, the way, pumps a thing. I'm just threw that word out. Is that a thing? Do women wear pumps? I mean, it's another word for high heel, but okay. pumps would kind of be like like a thicker, I, when I more say pumps, comfortable version. I will literally tell you what I was thinking. You know how like those Air Jordans, they have the little <laughs> button you push and it makes the, the shoes pump up? That's literally what I thought. I'm like, wait a second. Do women wear those? I don't think they do. I think my ignorance in women's fashion is once again, of all things, on a podcast about about nighthawks. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I mean, maybe women <laughs> would be interested in high heels if they were more comfortable like that. Mm. You know, we just hit the little button. <laughs> I think I up. like had a pair of shoes like that back then. Apparently, they were expensive. I. I just remember like being obsessed with the little pumpy thing because you could like pump it up and then let the air out. Yeah, but I. Honestly, Wouldn't it pop after a while? No. I mean, honestly, it was like, I really can't really tell the difference between like more air or less air. It's just a novelty. Mm. Yeah. All right. I mean, I was a hush puppy, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> My shoe choices were never too interesting. 
I think I once had shoes that had the Joker on them. That's that's as far wow. as it goes. Wow. Yeah. How old were you when that happened? I was 42. No. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you weren't any older than 10. <laughs> I think it was like eight. <laughs> if you weren't still in elementary school... <laughs> Hey, you guys want to see what's on my shoes? Look, it's the Joker. He's going, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> okay. So Wolfgar um, goes to this liquor store, this like bodega, I guess, where he set up shop with the owner. Yeah. And he has like a little like downstairs like office where he's keeping all his stuff. <clears throat> and um, so now he's told that everyone knows what he looks like because... Um, Shaka is down there and but he says he has info so Shaka by the way is Persis Kambata uh, most people know her from being bald in Star Trek the motion picture she wasn't with us very long very striking actress she doesn't have a lot to do I think the most interesting thing about her is that her name is Shaka yeah I know Shaka Khan exactly. Shaka Khan that's kind of what I was thinking of I was like did they just it's spelled differently because shock well, is C H A K K A. And this I know is, it's spelled this is like, differently. This is like shocker. Shocker. All right. So we see Stallone call his ex and make dinner plans. <laughs> More of this like, crap, which I, we do not care about. I Especially know. after that amazing chase. And Billy D. Williams is injured. It's like, let's do more domestic dis- disputes that he's having with his ex. Yeah. Oh man. He he goes and does target practice without his glasses. So and again, you, and you were like, again. I don't get it. <laughs> like, either commit to the glasses or don't. I mean, he did a movie called Tango and Cash where he's always he's wearing his glasses almost every single scene. It's like, okay, it's it's kind of a funny idea that Stallone, you know, is wearing these bookish glasses. But in this film, I, I feel like maybe when he's dressed in the like drag outfits with the with the masks mm-hmm. he can't wear the glasses underneath so he has to do target practice without his glasses so he can not lose his skills you know what i mean <laughs> no i'm serious maybe there's a rhyme and a reason to this okay all right so i gotta i gotta do some work yeah because i gotta look good in those pumps so yeah. You know. <laughs> all right so now they're at this UN event, which they've been talking about this whole time. They think this is where Wolfgar is going to like make his big move. And you and I were like cracking up over their massive walkie talkies. Oh man. Like this is like Zach Morris level walkie talkies. Yeah. Seriously. Like a, a brick. These are like the first walkie talkies. Yeah. It's, it's insane how big they are. I mean, they're trying to be like conspicuous. Yeah, no, there's no way you were undercover with these things. <laughs> I mean, Stallone probably has like a decent sized hand and he's holding this thing and it is, you could fit like two more hands on it. <laughs> it was so big. It's pretty ridiculous. With yeah, like no, the huge like. Your cover is blown if you're even <laughs> holding one of these things. You can't hide it in your jacket because it's huge. <laughs> oh, so then, um, but Shaka takes out hartman who the guy went, who's been yeah, aided, who's been telling the cops the to anti-terrorist be, guy yeah, yeah. anti-terrorist guy yep so now now we're i don't know what if this is the second act or the third act but wolfgar and shaka end up holding up a cable car with un delegates yeah and this is like i've never seen a cable car like this it's kind of like a gondola at a <laughs> like a ski resort but it's like yeah. for in the city mm-hmm. like going over the river or something you know when you and i went to the royal gorge remember it was something yeah. like this it's like yeah. a little box you're in and you're suspended over yeah, like a i've mile. never seen anything like this in a city do they know. still have them i in don't New think York? so i don't oh, believe so okay so um he kills a hostage on this thing yeah this woman which is so awful Just to kind of like, because he said he wants to know police and Stallone is like over in the helicopter. Um, And then just like throws the body into the river below. How do you feel? Helpless. Could have cut the cable. It's a long way down. Why'd you kill the woman? I wanted to. So why don't you kill me? In due time. I want you to tell him I have brought the city to its knees. Police. My cowards. What? 
That's it. Tell him. He's brought the city to its knees. Police are cowards. We're not that different, Dick. I do not enjoy killing, but it's my job. Someone has to do it. I represent oppressed victims who have nothing. I speak only for them. I'm their voice. I'm a liberator. You think you're a liberator? <laughs> it fascinates you. But then there's a woman who has like an eight eight month old baby. Yeah. And so he tells them he wants the baby off the cable car and he wants De Silva to retrieve him. And he doesn't want the papers to write that he was, quote, a man without a conscience. And I was like, wow, that is interesting. Very calculating. Yeah. Um, but this is the big um the big um stunt st- stunt yeah that you were talking yeah about, well, stallone, about. well stallone has said that this is the the stunt he did in a movie that scared him the most he's he has a fear of heights <clears throat> and oh, uh, he has a fear of heights he has a fear of heights and he did this scene yeah where he's he's literally suspended uh, over su- such a great height um he did it he actually did it and you can see it in the film too i mean there's no faking that i mean there's just like it looks like there's a mile below him yeah it's great I, I like this scene a lot. I like this part of the movie a lot. I mean, it's, it, this is, I mean, it, it takes too long to get to this, um, but I like it. I like the standoff. I've always liked movies about like hostage situations and yeah, I like this scene. Yeah. So he takes the baby, he takes the note, he's supposed to give it to the press. Mm-hmm. Um, so Wolfgar still has all of these, oh man, hostages. Mm-hmm. It's getting late. I think <laughs> we're going to try and get through this. What scene okay. is this? Uh, what day is this now? I, is January 17th yeah, or 18th? I have no idea because they, oh, they've they, abandoned they've that. They've abandoned yeah. that. I wonder is, if they're editing them. Like, no one's going to care about the calendar thing. Just keep going. Just keep going. Don't no, worry. seriously. Nobody cares. Like, and like the writer's like, but but it's February 14th. Then. <laughs> no, we don't care. But it's Valentine's Day. It's significant. No, it's not significant. We're cutting We're cutting the little, the little calendar date. <laughs> So Wolfgar wants political prisoners released like at a certain time at the airport and he wants Deke to drive the bus to pick up Wolfgar and the hostages. All right. So there's this whole thing where he they he like all the hostages are like kind of in a circle and Wolfgar's in the middle of one circle and Shaka's in the middle of another circle and they're like trying to like make their way from the gondola thing to the bus. And so Deke is standing outside the bus and he, he, and he gets this like recording of the anti-terrorist guys, like whole speech on Shaka. Okay. And so he plays the, the audio, like as they're trying to like get onto this bus and (laughs) it was like a spoiled bee who kills without provocation. And she just like freaks out and then um, she gets shot in the head. How so. dare he compare me to a spoiled bee? <laughs> well, I would say the B word, but I don't want to get a rating on our podcast. Yeah, well, so. still. So, yeah. By the way, um, the thing I don't buy in this scene at all is that both Deke and Wolfgar know how to drive a bus. Um, I don't buy it. You don't think, like, when you go through, like, certain police training that you... <laughs> Drive a bus? He's not Ralph Cramden. No, I think he's good. You know, if anything, it, it's like, okay, like, so he, the hostage situation is this. Deke, you have to drive this bus. I'm sure, like, they gave him, like, a quick run through, and he's like, okay, uh, is this the button that shuts the door, or is this the beep beep board? Okay, like, well, we Wolfgar doesn't know how to drive the bus, and that's why he drives it into the river. <laughs> <laughs> I think he does. I think he drives it in the river on purpose. Oh, you do? Yeah, to make his getaway. I do. Yeah, because they never see him surface. We yeah. think he like, like ha ha! I will swim away. You will not find me. <laughs> He's like, you did not know that I can hold my breath for twenty minutes. Exactly. Yeah, I think I think that was part of the plan. Oh, all right. Well, there there you go. All right. So uh, then the cops find the liquor store with all their intel, mm-hmm. and so Deke calls his ex. And no one answers the Uh-oh. phone. No Lindsay Wagner. No bionic yep. woman. Yep. Because someone says, like, look at this. And obviously it's a piece of paper with, like, all of 
the intel that Wolfgar's collected on Deke and his ex, you know, just like the anti-terrorist guy said, you know, that they are ruthless. So then we see that she's walking home and Wolfgar spots her from across the street. So we know that Deke is like freaking out and that he's trying to make his way to the ex-wife. But then not exactly clear how he knows his wife. This is before social media. This is before, like, anything. Anything. So I'm not really even sure how he would know what she looks like, let alone who she is. Well, he probably, like, got into some kind of, like, records, like, city records. So he could have found out that... that List of women he... that D can't commit to? <laughs> yes. Oh, this is the one he, he takes to the Italian restaurants. Anybody would not pop the question. Oh, that is the one. She's not smiling in this picture. I will find her. In New York City in the 80s. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it makes perfect sense to me. Okay. Well, there's probably public records of marriages and divorces. And then there's a phone He found like a wedding photo? Well, no. He found her address. Like he, he, there's like phone books on every corner with like names and addresses in them. So I'm sure. But it's New York. How many Mrs. De Silva's do you think are in New York in the 80s? Oh, well, that's a good point. It's not know. like, you know, it's not like Shaka, <laughs> Shaka, Shaka. That would stand out in the New York phone book, okay? But like Ellen De Silva, come on. In, New, in the 80s, New York City? Well, maybe he... Oh, it's one of these 14 De, De Silvas. I just know it. I will find her. <laughs> Hello? Hi? Oh, not you. <laughs> okay, 12 more to call. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, I, I don't know how he found her, but he's a criminal mastermind. <laughs> obviously, he runs like a terrorist organization. How do, uh, <laughs> he doesn't know how to drive a bus, but yes, he could find he could find okay. this woman. Okay, all right. So she's walking home, and Wolfgar spots her from across the street, and then he he goes up the stairs to the. It's like the like a she lives in like a brownstone, yes. right? Yeah, and so he like picks the lock and then he like breaks the other lock and he comes in and you pointed this out like that there is an eight and a half by 11 framed (laughs) picture of Stallone (laughs) on a table right next to the door and he has no beard or anything too so I mean it looks it it literally looks like the glossy that Stallone like signs at autograph here you go well what I think it is ding ding get in the rig love (laughs) slide That's exactly what it looks like. No, he's like... It's a black and white glossy of himself. Yeah, he's in a tux, though. I think it was meant to be, like, a photo from their wedding. Yeah, but where is she? Wouldn't wouldn't she also be in the wedding photo? I mean, look, I looked really good on my wedding day. You don't see a picture of just me, like, in my tux. I have pictures of just me. (laughs) You do? Yes. (laughs) Where are these pictures? Are they black and white? Are they, like, 8 by 10? Yes. In are the, they really in, the, in our album? Wow, I gotta, I gotta see these. I have not seen these. I, yeah, I don't think there's just one. Of I didn't get any yourself. glamour shots of just me and my tux. Like, I don't think cheesing so. it up. No, I don't think. I don't know if you think you have one by yourself. Wow, but I have one by myself. Well, for our twentieth anniversary, I'm definitely getting one by my myself. Okay. Yeah, and it's Fine gonna be then. black and white. I'm gonna put it right there by the door. So you walk in, first thing you see is me, in black mm. and white, in a tux. Okay. By myself <laughs> in my house, which makes so much sense. You want to look at yourself as you leave it. As I as I walk in the door after a long day of work, be like, "Hey, handsome, yeah, look at yeah." <laughs> that's that's what I want. <laughs> All right, so okay. so Wolfgar is kind of sneaking around, and we see the um, Mrs. De Silva just like in the kitchen, like kind of. I don't know what she's doing, like kind of doing dishes, kind of just walking around, not not noticing anything. Um, so Wolfgar takes the phone off the hook and then he goes into the kitchen and he goes to stab her. And when she turns around, who do we see? <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> don't I look good at these pubs or what? <laughs> do you like my... Silky nightgown. <laughs> you notice that the shoes match the dress? Have you even noticed? <laughs> Do you like my wig? <laughs> Don't it look like Dolly Parton? So he shoots Wolfgar. Um, 
kills him and then the- well, boy does he kill i mean he's i mean every every gunshot just yeah. takes a piece of him off. just like yeah. blows him away and he yeah. ends up like going out the front door and just like falling down the stairs and the final shot of the scene is just deke kind of sitting on the stairs of the brownstone and with this dead body in front of him yeah and then credits and stallone's like okay i gotta remember to take the dress off before i go for the final scene okay I can't be like Tony Curtis oh, and sound like it hot. Wait, he wasn't wearing the no, nightgown. No, no. He comes out, he, you know. <gasps> How, what? That's totally not even, doesn't even make sense. No, I mean, you know, you saw how dressed up he was. It would have taken a while to get out of that outfit. What did he just unless, like throw it on over Unless Wrecker is like out there for 15 minutes and says, so, okay, okay. All right. Now I'm going to sit down next to you. That's ridiculous. I had to get out of that outfit. He should have. Those heels were killing me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you're right. That doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I like, mean, the end. And of as the- he walked out the door, he's like, "Hey, look, hey, hands, he looks at his picture." <laughs> I'm so glad you kept that photo. Yeah, I mean, he shoots him wearing the wig and the nightgown. The final scene should be him dressed in drag. Yeah, that's the only yeah. thing that makes sense. Mm-hmm. You don't have time to change your clothes. Yeah, but he was probably like, what? Was that like too? Was that his ego making? I can't that let decision? the guys of the four C be like this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I mean it's it is so funny that like this is his because uh, I said like how do, how does this work? How did he pull it off? So he ran home. He sees Lindsay Wagner, taps her on the shoulder, like, "Okay, I need you like uh, uh, go to New Jersey for a couple of days." Well, so but- she leaves, and he immediately runs upstairs, puts on her dress, puts on a wig. Okay, you know. but I don't understand. Because it looks like her coming down the street mm-hmm. when Wolf Maybe Gar- she helped, helped him? Maybe, but like, I don't... Or is it him the whole time? I don't... Oh, is you, it a dress to oh, kill situation? Oh, he has a, like a face, like a mask of his ex-wife? Yeah, That's sure. Creepy. He's got He's got masks. That's so creepy. Yeah. No way. He's like Michael Caine in Dress to Kill. He's always got that outfit no, ready to go. That's too weird. I think what happened is was... It though, remember the opening of, of this movie where he's wearing a, like a mask of somebody? Oh, yeah, like of, of a nobody. We I mean, don't this know. cop is insane. Yeah. <laughs> this is such a goofy... It's such a goofy, you know, like, okay. Here's what I think he did. It's it's dress time. I think, I think what he did was he got home before her. Mm-hmm. Wolfgar sees her come home. She goes into the house and he's like, you got to go upstairs because there's a killer coming. And then he goes straight into the kitchen because that's the only, there's no time. <laughs> like literally no time. There's definitely some loose ends in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was directed by Bruce Malmuth. Um, Bruce Malmuth was also an actor. And one of my favorite things about him, he is the ring announcer in The Karate Kid. The one who goes, Daniel LaRusso is going to fight. Daniel LaRusso is going to fight. That's the director of this film. Um, it's not the greatest. <laughs> it's the, again, this is this is like this is the Starsky and Hutch era of buddy cop uh, movies or buddy cop even stories. Um, you know, it, the film has been credited for being ahead of its time in dealing with 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 domestic terrorism. I don't think the film deserves quite that much credit. It it could be sharper in its direction, certainly sharper in its screenplay. I don't know if the the so-called director's cut of the movie, the the version of the film that apparently was longer, I don't know if that would actually help things. Um, Because, uh, you know, you you have a movie that it's, it's not particularly stylish. It has these really strong sequences, these really strong moments, but there's there's something missing. What I think does work, there are there are individual sequences in the film that are surprising. And, you know, at the heart of it, you've got Rucker Howard's performance. We lost an actor who made over a hundred movies in his lifetime and could really play anything. I mean, he he became primarily famous for playing bad guys, and it's because of this performance. Because if you look at his work in Blade Runner and in The Hitcher in particular, um, you you definitely see like okay, like they clearly saw Nighthawks and they saw how commanding he is. You you know, Stallone has made movies you know, like in Judge Dredd where it's like him and Armand Sant. Um, he's made movies where clearly 
the villain was not going to make it to the end of the film. And in this case, that's not necessarily, it's not a given that Stallone is going to beat this guy because he is this, you know, this exotic um, international terrorist. And there's something really unhinged and uh, disturbing about Rucker Howard's performance. It, I, I do feel like Howard's performance and a series of, there's a series of scenes in this movie, I think, that are very, very good, even though the film itself is pretty underwhelming, I would say. Oh, yeah. So two stars for me. Oh, probably one star for me. One star, just one. Yeah. Oh, man. I know. Because the only thing I really like about it is the first scene and the last scene. <laughs> oh, wow. So you just, you like still in a dress. Well, because it's so surprising, you know? I got to say this. I mean, you know, the one thing that Tango and Cash does not have is Sylvester Stallone in drag. It has Kurt Russell in drag. So this movie kind of completes that. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's kind of like a, you know, and he wears glasses in both movies. So this is like the prequel to Tango and Cash. Mm, which I did enjoy more, but it's really stupid. Tango and Cash? Yeah. It's so much more fun than this movie. It's so much more fun. Yeah. It's way more fun, but the plot is... Like paper. Oh, it's thing. idiotic. It's so yeah. idiotic. I think the movie succeeds. <laughs> talk about Tango and Cash. I think it succeeds when they're in prison. I think that's my favorite part, portion of the movie. Yeah. The, the prison break scene. I love that part yeah. of the movie. But when you get to the end of the film, it's like a monster truck battle. Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's so bad. But like this film is really slow and I just. It wasn't a very like fun movie to watch. It's very dark. Yeah, it's not Serpico. It's not Death Wish. Like it, it, in terms of being a really pulpy cop drama of that era, it's not. It's, it's not exciting enough. It isn't. I think there are good scenes in the movie, really good scenes. But uh, yeah, the pacing is a problem. The there's a problem with story momentum. And yeah, you know, again, like it would have made a world of difference if Stallone and Billy D. Williams had just electric chemistry, but they don't. Yeah. They don't. It's almost like they don't really want to be partners. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I, I don't know if there was, I, I don't know a lot about the making of this film. I don't know if there was friction between the two of them or if it was just the script, but it, it's, yeah, it's not one of the great cinematic pairings. And it should be because they were both at the top of their game. They were both, you know, they're, they're both hugely charismatic guys. So it should have worked. And mm -hmm. I think there's things here that work. I don't think it's a bad film, but yeah, because. It, it just it feels like an early example. I mean, this, this movie would 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 have killed as a Lethal Weapon sequel, you know. Mm. Um, but because it's this, it feels somewhere between TV and a movie, you know. Yeah, it feels kind of stuck in. It, it feels like an R-rated episode of Starsky and Hutch. Mm. So, yeah. All right. So two stars for me. Wow, one star from you, man. You All right. All right. Not maybe, a fan of the maybe Nighthawks. Maybe one and a half, but oh no, no, know. no. Stick stick to it by all means. Yeah. Yeah. You're never going to watch this again, right? No, yeah. never going to watch it again. One star. I mean, when, <laughs> like the first scene when he takes off the mask, I was like, oh my gosh. And then in the end when it's really him and not the wife, I'm like, oh my gosh. But, you know, the rest was like, okay. It would have been fun if the entire movie, you know, like there's like this, like this big hefty dude, you know, with like, like a giant, you know, orange hair. And arrests somebody and he rips his face off. And every time, surprise, like the whole movie is Stallone in gotcha costumes. Oh, How fun with that. The that, whole movie. That would have been hilarious. But I got to get a couple of the disguise. And then you never know if it's him or not. Yeah. Like Rucker Hauer is, you know, like he's, he's, uh, you know, he's bullying this guy, this old man who's trying to cross the street. Stallone rips his face off. Like, hey, it's me again. It's a surprise. <laughs> I must stop this, this man who keeps dressing up in costumes. <laughs> been a wackier film that would have been way wackier and better and more fun to watch <laughs> for sure yeah uh, all right well i don't know i have nothing so not a recommendation from you no. i think honestly i think rucker howard's performance for those of you who miss him and i mean he certainly had quite the cult following and an amazing career uh check this out he is electrifying in this movie the movie itself is not electrifying but he's so good in it, I think at times you forget that the film is kind of middle of the road. It's not one of the great Stallone movies. It's amazing, I think, like this, like he did Rambo right after this. Um, so yeah, if anything, it almost I feels mean, like... Honestly, it could have been anybody in the Stallone role. Like it could have been a different actor. And I don't know that it would have changed the movie that much. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't have a lot of the typical Stallone things that you find, you know? 
I mean, he doesn't even take his shirt off. There is that. You know? He was trying to stretch as an actor. There's no, like, workout montage. Does this character work out? I don't know. Exactly. I mean, he was able to pull that guy across the, you know, uh, the dock after he was unconscious. Yeah. He is pretty strong. That's true. But he also is wearing those terrible, terrible 70s outfits, and he's got that terrible hair and that scary beard. Yeah. And, and the, those glasses. And, and the glasses that yeah. we don't even know. Like, does he really need them? We don't know. No idea. Yeah. yeah. A lot of loose ends in this film. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that wraps it up. Do you have any final thoughts? I want to have uh, an 8 by 10 glossy of myself in black and white right next to my door so I can walk in every day, look at a picture of myself in my wedding day, and be like, hey, handsome. I'm going <laughs> to okay. make that happen after this. All right. We'll see what we can do. Okay. That concludes our conversation of Nighthawks. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone.